بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري ولا الأخذة من السانية فوقود بإذن الإلمة We begin in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we send peace and blessings upon our final messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome back everyone to the Sil Roof Friday Reminder um, This is going to be the last of our six part series that we've been on um, going over the six rights that a believer has on another believer and also Today, there was supposed to be Jumu'ah on campus today at the Rutgers campus. Um, but because of the storm on Wednesday night, uh, parts of the campus are still inaccessible. So Jumu'ah was canceled for today, but we will be resuming in-person Jumu'ah next week at the Student Activity Center, inshallah. So instead of the Friday reminder on here, we will have Jumu'ah on campus, inshallah, um, starting next week. But with that, as we continue this conversation that we've been having or these uh, a discussion uh, on the six rights that a Muslim owes another Muslim, it's based off of that very quintessential and very simple hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in which he said, that the rights of a believer on a believer are six. And we've been systematically, at least I hope systematically, inshallah, been trying to understand a little bit more depth for each of them. The first one that we started off with, that if you run into them or if they throw a salam your way, that you respond to their salam. Um, and we talked about how beautiful a, a situation of non-judgment that throwing a salam to someone or responding to their salam really is supposed to be. وَإِذَا دَعَاكَ فَأَجِبْهُ um, The second one was that if they invite you, that you respond to them because you give them the dignity of their response. That if someone makes an effort, you continue through and you respond to that effort. Um, وَإِذَا اسْتَنْسَحَكَ فَانْصَحْ لَهُ that if they ask you for advice, that you give them advice. And it's this idea that you share good with them. And you're not saying like, no, this is just mine. I figured it out. You figured it out for yourself. But it's this idea that if they ask you for advice, you give them advice. Um, so, so far, we're up to three. The fourth, وَإِذَا عَطَسَ فَحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ فَسَمِّتْهُ And if they sneeze, if they go through even the slightest bit of discomfort or issue of their health, فَحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ And they uh, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَسَمِّتْهُ We respond to them, follow up with the best action that could be said. And simply speaking, that was to say, يَرْحَمَكَ Allah. Uh, may God have mercy on you. Um, but more specifically, it was you respond with the next right action based on whatever they're going through. And then th it was almost as if you make a dua for them right away because you show that you care. And then that's followed up with the fifth right that we talked about last week. And if they become sick, that you visit them. That it's this idea of not just preventative care if they're about to go through something difficult, but also restorative care. Be a part of, inshallah, their their um, uh, ability of gaining back health in some way. And the last right that the Prophet ﷺ spoke of, وَإِذَا مَاتَ فَاتَّبِعْهُ And if they were to die, you follow them. This is that last right of um, a believer on another believer. And before we even get into the specifics of this right, I want us to think about everything that is encompassed here. It's from the smallest event, like a salam or a sneeze, to a moment of need, like someone asking you for advice, um, a moment of celebration, someone inviting you somewhere, a moment of sickness, uh, which is if there are sick, to the moment, the last moments of someone's life, or actually after the last moments of someone's life has have passed, that when they are sick, you follow them. That it's so encompassing in terms of the rights that we should be thinking about each other with. And before getting into the depths of this right, one of the things that I want to make sure to emphasize is these are the rights that are given from one believer to another. They are quite literally anyone you see deserves these rights from you. And when we think about if that's the rights that someone who is, a, a, for lack of a better word, a stranger gets from me? What are the rights that a family member or a close friend gets from me? And actually, the, to answer that question, it'll be each of these except to a much bigger extent. So, of course, when if you see someone, you say salam to them. You give you you make that dua, may Allah have, uh, have mer a peace and mercy on you, that you'd make that dua for them. Um, but if someone was maybe part of your family, you go out of your way to extend salam regularly to them. Um, if you happen to see someone who is needing advice and they ask you for advice, you give it to them. 
versus if it's a family member, it would be that right to the next level that you go out of your way of maybe seeing if they need advice or providing it preemptively. So it really would be just an extension of everything that was just said here. But the last um, component, the sixth component of what إِذَا mata, and if they die, فَاتَّبِعْهُ is probably the most comprehensive of the um, uh, advices that was given. And that is that if they, it's, it's a big reminder, of course, that if they pass away, that your responsibility towards them doesn't end. And there's something beautiful about that, that the, yes, the, the one who has passed away still has a right over you. And there's something beautiful about that, that we're not conditional creatures that only think about each other in the living, breathing sense. But we also think about each other that um, that we recognize, we confirm that we believe in a life after death. And one of the ways that we confirm that is we act on it when it presents itself in front of us. When you hear about the death of someone, you're supposed to try to attend their janazah. And this is as simple as, of course, in in our tradition, the death process is very beautiful and very simple. And it's seen as actually something that is natural and that every human being will go through. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin maut. That every person in Surah Al-Imran, every individual shall taste death. And it's understood as a, uh, uh, an eventuality, that the one thing you're guaranteed is that you will be tasting death in some way. And then we respond to that by saying something like, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. To Allah we uh, uh, belong or have always belonged and to Allah we are always returning. It's this idea that they've just reached that moment that I will inshallah be going through as well. But even in that moment, they have a, uh, they have, I have a responsibility to fulfill. I have a right uh, to give them. And that is that you follow them. And following them in the basic sense means, of course, you hear about it. You offer condolences to the family if you have the ability to. And you try to attend that janazah. You pray those two rakah um, uh, of prayer. And there's so many beautiful rituals around prayer. The, uh, around that janazah prayer that there is no adhan and there is no aqama for that prayer and generally speaking it's understood because when a muslim is born typically you'll have someone recite the adhan whether it's the uncle the father um uh, the, the mother someone will recite the adhan in the ears of the infant and it's understood that as that adhan is actually the call to prayer for that person's death so that the entirety of a human life is actually just in between the call to prayer and the prayer itself. So there's something beautiful about that that's already found. But the Prophet ﷺ didn't just say, just attend their janazah. How the Prophet ﷺ phrased is, فَاتَّبِعْهُ Follow them. Follow them could mean a, a, a comprehensive list of things. One, follow them would be be reminded that you're going to be literally following them. So when you hear that a, Muslim, a believer has passed away, you're like, it's supposed to be a reminder for myself that in, once, I, inshallah, I will get to that stage one day. And I ask that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it my time that I am ready for it. So there's a degree of empathetic processing that you go through in that you recognize your own mortality and you recognize your own position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that person goes through there. So that's one idea of follow them as well, that you recognize you will be following them. But to follow them also means it then the same things you would want for someone to do at your own janazah that you do at their janazah, which would be, of course, all of us want that um, there are people who are asking for our forgiveness when we, when we have passed. That, um, that would be one way. Another way would be that they are acting upon knowledge that we have imparted to them. So if someone taught you something that was extremely beneficial, that was extremely something passionate, something they were passionate about, that you go ahead and you start acting upon that even more. Why? Because you want to make sure that you are contributing to this person's legacy on this earth. And um, if they were involved in some sort of charity, you continue that forward. If they were a provider for their family, you go ahead and try to take a little bit, not completely, of course, but you go ahead and try to continue that by helping their family in, that, in, in some way. It's this idea of follow them in what they used to do here. Because we, ha we ha have, alhamdulillah, a tradition in which a person's book of deeds are not completely closed, actually, when they pass away. If There's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says that three things uh, continue to raise a person's ranks even after they have died. And that is if they have children and their children pray for them. So if someone has children and you support them in some way, it would be the idea of encouraging their children to live up to the beautiful legacy, hopefully, that that person laid behind. 
Um, the second way was that if they taught beneficial knowledge, and that knowledge continues to benefit on this earth. That's why if they taught you anything, you make use this moment to remind yourself, what did that person teach me and how do I now act upon it? And then the third, of course, is that if they um, contributed to some sort of charity, that if they established a well for people to drink water from, if they established a charity, if they um, established a school maybe that people benefit from or learn from, that as the good that they had put forward continues to uh, um, benefit people in this world, that their ranks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to, to raise. So following them will also mean, how do I ensure, how do I um, uh, make sure that their legacy, inshallah, is, is codified in good? What that also comes down to is if they had upset you, if there were some unfinished kind of um, uh, conflicts or anything going on, that you try to resolve them as quickly as possible. Uh, you try to forgive them as you can. That would be also following them because you're recognizing the state that they are now in and you make sure to go um, to help them in that. Uh, follow them also comes down to, as we talked about, is their family. That consoling someone who has passed away, uh, console, consoling someone who's lost a loved one, is an important um, uh, thing to do in our tradition. And I know that most of us are told something like, say, inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. And we're supposed to do that. When you hear about death, you say, to Allah we belong and to Allah we return. And we say that typically to the family member. But what else are we supposed to do when we console someone? When we console someone, we're supposed to go. I know that the most typical thing is you give them a hug and you say, I'm sorry for your loss. And I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Inshallah, if we've been doing that, that's, that's been a sense of comfort and benefit for the family. But you're actually encouraged to go visit someone and sit down with someone. And a lot of us just sit there awkwardly in silence. And there's not silence. Your presence with silence is beautiful. But if we really want to make it a productive act, you actually want to encourage that person who has lost a loved one to speak. Because what happens when someone speaks is it allows them to process the emotions that they're going through. Appropriate questions to ask in those moments was would be along lines of um, uh, asking them to share a memory. Were you close with them? How did uh, when was the last time you saw them? Um, uh, encouraging them to speak about their loved one who has just passed away is actually something that's very therapeutic and very beneficial. Because one of the things that tends to happen. Um, when someone is improperly grieving, is that they start talking about the past as if it's the present. Like, they're still with me. I still feel them. And uh, it, you want to get to the point where they can talk about their loved one in the past so that it allows them to have an appropriate sense of time. And that's really what's encouraged when you go and count, console someone who has passed away. A couple of years ago, I did this with them. In their last moment, they had said this. If they keep speaking about it in the past tense, that allows them to grieve effectively. And you want to help them through that grieving process. That's part of the purposes of a janaza prayer is so that there's a gathering, of course, to pray for the maghfirah of that person. But there's also a gathering in which there's enough conversation that a family member has and are able to impart that allows them to effectively process this tragic death that has just occurred. With that understanding, though, that of course, death is not the end in our tradition. That death was considered just a part of life. Um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created death and life to see which one of us would be most deserving or best. And it's this idea that this was always going to be an inevitability. And I cannot, um, I, I know that a time will come, inshallah, when I will be reunited with that person. So, of course, there's that reality. But it doesn't change the fact that losing someone for the rest of our lives is going to hurt for a while. So helping them process through that would be the idea of also فَتَّبِعْهُ Follow them. Follow them and do the things for them that maybe they aren't able to do themselves, which would be consoling their families, which would be praying for them. Do that for them because they won't get the chance. And the big thing that this really imparts in the mindset of a believer is um, that uh, our uh, relationships with each other, not even death, separates us from, from the rights and responsibilities uh, that our relationships do form. 
And I think there, there's a beautiful um, uh, uh, closure or comfort to that, to that, that someone you meet and someone who's, who's connected with your heart, inshallah, even if you or they pass away, that doesn't mean you can't still be doing good for each other. And that's such a beautiful right and responsibility uh, that this last part of this hadith really hit home. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that fulfill all of these rights for our brothers and sisters around us. And our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with people in our lives who fulfill our rights when it is our moment to go through these uh, these situations. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those that really appreciate the rights is not just the simple action that's supposed to follow, but recognize the deep-seated principle that brings about this Muslim personality as we take on some of these simple actions like saying salam, saying yarhamakallah when someone sneezes, giving someone advice, accepting or, or declining an invitation. And uh, of course, when we hear about death or when we hear about sickness visiting them and when we hear about someone passing away, that we follow them in the best way that they can be followed. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.